the five types of older adult clients you'll be working with as a fit pro. Hi, I'm Hayley from Parallel Coaching and in today's video, we're gonna explore older adult clients and your role as a fit pro, but most importantly, the types of clients you're gonna come across and what their abilities are and what their disabilities might be, but also what their capability is and what their requirements are during exercise. So this will make a really good grounding for helping you expand who you're working with and also check in with your assumptions about who it is you're actually working with. Before we get going, just to let you know, there is a link alongside this video where you can find more information and you can also test your knowledge on today's content. So let's understand, first of all, what your assumptions are. The assumptions that we have about a particular demogra demographic or a particular type of client we're going to be working with. Older adults are classed as those that are 65 or over. Now, most fitness professionals don't actually have a qualification that will allow them to work with those clients. So level two gym, level three PT, level three Pilates or yoga doesn't actually cover older adults. Instead, you need to look at an additional qualification that will allow you to expand working with those that are 65 and older. And that's because of lots of different requirements and considerations we need to factor in. But with this now expansion of who you can work with once you've done the qualification, we often have an assumption. And the main thing I hear is that people either assume the ability of their client is the same as one person they've met that has a particular ability. So, for example, you might go, I know a 70 year old that is disabled and as a result of their common clinical conditions they have, they are reliant on a carer, they need help with daily living tasks and if they're looking at exercise, it's going to be very limited and small. And you might then make the assumption that everybody over 70 has this limited range of movement, limited stability and limited experience of activity. In which case, your ideas of what you're going to be doing from an exercise point of view are probably quite narrow and quite slim. The other type of assumption you might have is that you know a 70 year old that's perfectly fit. Maybe it's the fittest person you know. They're still running marathons. They're still moving around. So you assume that every other 70 year old has the same capabilities as they have. Not that they were actually just very, very fit in their younger age and they're still declining in health, but they're at a higher point of health and fitness compared to other older adults. Now, this is really important to understand that not everybody is the same. And as we age, that gap gets bigger. So as we age, we're more likely to find extremes. We're more likely to find the occasional very fit client. We're also more likely to find disabled clients or those that have long term conditions because our anatomy and our physiology get stressed. They get stressed based on the lifestyles we've led throughout our lives and they get stressed based on everything we've done. Our, our food intake, our activity, the amount of stress we have in our life, all of this affects us as we age. So it's likely that our clients are not just gonna be one type and we need to really see them as individuals. So to help you expand this, we've bulk this into five different types of clients and I think this really helps you understand the depth of the type of client and you might have many more types that you might slide into this but I think they help you with some basic categorization. So the first is disabled clients and this is probably going to be the most limited amount of exercise that you're going to be doing with your clients. Those that are older adults and disabled may well have long term conditions or be on medications. And the important thing here is that you need to be qualified in order to work with those. That's going to involve a long term conditions qualification or an exercise referral qualification, something that will teach you about the medications, the common clinical conditions and how you work alongside them. But let's now take that to one side and just think about the limitations of the individual. If they're in a wheelchair, chances are the exercise they're going to be doing is chair based predominantly. There might be some occasional standing work, but what you're going to need to do is make sure that, that is very supervised and very stable and controlled. You're going to make sure that you're in a safe environment, that you understand that the equipment you're using is stable and safe to do so. It's probably going to be one to one or even with the help of a carer alongside or two trainers to one individual. You might then bring them into a group, but choose not to bring them to standing if that's something that's going to be more risky. So it involves a little risk assessment about what their individual ability is. Now, alongside the seated work and the small amounts of standing, they're going to have a limited range of movement. 
there's going to be a limited choice of exercises that you can now bring into that client. You can't say, okay, let's do some cardio and then go, right, we'll go for a run or we'll go for a walk or we'll put you on the bike because now you're limited as the type of exercises that you can choose. And that can be frustrating as a fit pro. It can leave you kind of keep going, I need more exercises, I need more exercises. But it's about matching what's appropriate for that client. You also might have to deal with lots of pain. You might have to deal with cognitive issues. And you do need to really factor in all of the different requirements for that particular client. Obviously, there's also going to be no impact. It's not even low impact. It's no impact because they're moving very steadily and controlled. Now, these are really important things to bear in mind for that first type of client, the disabled client. But as we move on to the second type of client, we've put this as limited mobility. This is going to be a notch up from being totally seated. And it means that you might well bring them to a seated exercise class, a chair based class, whereby they can move most of the time seated. But if they chose to stand up, they could do so with maybe a little bit of supervision or support. Maybe they hold onto the back of the chair or onto their frames or their rollators that they might be using. And this means that you can then start to encourage independence in their movement. And that becomes one of your key features or the key aims of your exercise is how do we increase independence through daily life? And it's about being strong enough and fit enough to move, to just carry on with daily life. And that becomes one of your key parts. And part of that is to avoid falling and falls prevention is so important. So you're going to be working on their agility, their balance and their coordination. And I don't mean sitting on a stability ball. <laughs> um, what I mean is about challenging that coordination, making sure that they are getting used to standing, sitting back down and understanding the ability to transfer weight from one foot to another. The more we can start integrating this, the more we can prevent falls and improve their, their quality of life going forwards. Now, again, it's going to be low impact, if any, um, that we're doing. And it's probably going to be a lot of seated work and they may also need assistance as well. The third type of client you may well come across is going to be someone who's a beginner but is active. Now the aim of their activity is instead going to be towards achieving the ACSM guidelines. You want to gradually bring them up to be able to do 150 minutes of moderate exercise every single week. We want to also bring in two resistance sessions a week and encourage daily stretching. Now, chances are your beginner client is not doing any of that. So it's about gradually bringing them up to that point um, and starting to encourage them to exercise safely, but also with confidence so that you know they're not going to get injured um, and also that they're going to start working towards their main aims. Now, type client number four is that they're already active. Now, this might be the type of client whereby you're like, they already go for a run. Yes, they're older clients, but they already go for a run regularly or they've been going to the gym regularly for 20 years. In which case, you're going to see them as an individual. You're going to progress just like you would with any other client, younger adult client. And you're going to gradually progress using your understanding of periodization, using your understanding of strength, hypertrophy and endurance, using your understanding of the energy systems and saying, actually, I need to see them as an individual. And I'm going to help work towards whatever their particular health and fitness goals are right now. So that's kind of the main four, but there is one more. The fifth one is carers and support workers. This is a really important part because inevitably, if you're working with clients that have lesser health, so our disabled clients or those with limited mobility, those first two we spoke about, the chances are they're going to come with carers. Now, those carers may have just want to drop off their, their, uh, their client with you, and then you're going to they might go out for a coffee or they might go and sit on their own or sit in the car or they might choose to join in with your classes or join in with that exercise program. So it's an amazing opportunity to get them active, to start doing something for themselves and to actually have a moment whereby they don't have to be a carer for somebody. And this can be really empowering. It can start their journey into exercise, their journey into becoming more active and starting to meet the ACSM guidelines. And it also means that then they're working on their ability to be better as a carer and also in their own world because they're going to have the strength to be able to help with transferring. They're going to have the fitness to be able to go for longer throughout the day without getting exhausted. They're also going to make sure that they have the health and fitness cardiovascularly to be able to live a long, healthy life, which is what they need to for themselves and potentially for their partner or the person they're caring for. So you've got these five types of clients. 
that are all fall under this older adult bracket. And you can see that a class for somebody that's disabled is gonna be very different for a class for somebody that's been going to the gym for 20 years. And you need to see them as individuals. So you might not class your classes or your packages that you're doing based just on age. It might be related to ability. Hopefully this has allowed you to think outside the box a little bit so that you can understand who you're working with and how to go and work with them. And also drop any assumptions you have about the types of clients you'll be working with. If you're not already qualified to work with older adult clients, then make sure you check out the link that is with this video, whereby you'll find out about the course that we offer that is called the Level 3 Award in Designing Exercise Programs for Older Adults. And this will help you be able to expand as a gym instructor, personal trainer, Pilates or yoga instructor, and then move forwards to expand who you can work with safely and effectively. Outside of that, make sure that you hit the little red subscribe button so you get notified of more videos like this. And I'd love for you to drop a comment below with your big takeaway from today's session. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.